Hi, Matt Noyce. Very quick storm update for you. Look, I think a lot of this stuff remains on track. I don't see a lot of reason to, uh, to change things around. What we told you about earlier is still the same with regard to the wind, the worst wind in the morning tomorrow along the coastline and also on the western slopes of some more hills and mountains. Uh, that may cause some isolated power outages. Still thinking about the bigger power outage potential being where the heavier snow falls in northern New England in particular, also in parts of western New England, and still looking at the coastal flood aspect uh, too that'll take place with beach erosion at that Thursday morning high tide. If you missed any of that, you can head over to our website. By the way, the website did launch today, one degreeoutside.com, the number one degreeoutside.com. Uh, this is where Danielle and I are kind of posting all our stuff. As you, as you scroll through, you see links to the videos, written posts, etc. cetera. Um, we do have an interactive radar. There's a couple of hiccups in the radar. If you play the loop, you'll see it kind of go in and out. But nonetheless, it's a really performant, really powerful uh, kind of tracking tool for you. You've got storm tracks and stuff on the side. I'll get into that another time. I want to keep this update pretty quick for you. Uh, some of you have asked, how do we get in touch with you? Send you our reports, send you our photos. You know, it's still, in, it's still active on, um, on social media. So here you go, uh, at one degree outside, at the number one degree outside. And you know what? That's my old handle. What I did is I took Matt NBC Boston. I transferred it over to one degree outside. So if you and I follow each other, we still follow each other. I'm just one degree outside now. Uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash the number one degree outside. You're able to connect with us there as well. All right. So let me give you an overview where we stand. Look, there's not a lot of cold air in place right now. You look at the map and the winds generally are coming out of the east. Um, you can hear the ping, though. I've got it here in the Merrimack Valley. I can hear the ping that's going on outside in the window. You may have the same thing happening. There's cold air above our heads. That's actually one part of it. The other part of it, remember, we talked about how the storm center, which right now is just developing near D.C. You can see the swirl and the wind showing up here. It's going to strengthen as it comes off Atlantic City, moves over the Cape. And so that's going to pull the wind out of the north. That also will drain some colder air in. But I want to focus on that cold air above our heads that's creating the sleet. And in some spots, you've gone to snow already in parts of central, western, northern New England. But you can see in-flight icing that's going on right now in a large area around the Boston metro, running up to the Manchester Boston Regional Airport. Look, pilots can handle this. It's not like that's a real issue. It's rather the fact that you've got at least some active ice that's going on in the sky. So it kind of starts to make sense that you're getting some of that pinging going on. Look what happens to the uh, to the freezing level as we get to about four in the morning on Thursday. It's down below 100 meters. So basically, you've got freezing level almost down to the ground all the way into Manchester. And it's not far off the ground when you get into far northern Mass, southern New Hampshire, 100 and 200 meters. Keep in mind, a meter's like three feet. So about 300 feet to about 600 feet. Hey, some of the northern Worcester Hills are certainly much taller than that. I mean, the airport at Worcester's a thousand feet off the ground. So you start to understand why more of us will get into the snow first in the high terrain, and then eventually more of us make that transition still as we go through time. One other way you can track it is what we call wet bulb temperature. In other words, what's the coldest the air could possibly get? Right now, the light blue that you're seeing across northwest Worcester County, western New Hampshire and Vermont, that's 29 to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Most of us aren't there yet. So you can't even cool the atmosphere enough to go over to snow and have it stick yet. <laughs> but if we go through time and we head into the overnight, now I'm taking you out to about, let's say, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock on Thursday morning, tomorrow morning. Now that 29 to 32 degree wet bulb temperature, the coldest you get is right along 495, right? So that's part of the reason that we're talking about a changeover that's going to happen. I could show it to you in a more conventional form, the forecast radar, the red being kind of a mix that takes place. You'll notice that as we go through 11 p.m. and midnight tonight, sure, we still have some mixing that's going on, but you're holding on to that east-northeast wind or the easterly wind. So you're holding on to the warmth that we looked at in that pocket around Boston, running up to northern Mass. Southeast New Hampshire starts to make the change as we go through 2 a.m. Oh, my goodness. This is so close. I mean, tomorrow morning, this is 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m. You get that change trying to come all the way down to the pike. You can see the hills, right? But the other thing is, if you're around the Merrimack Valley, 495 to southern New Hampshire, you are right on the edge of where that amount of snow starts to tick up. So have I made any changes to the forecast? No, not really. Same forecast that Danielle and I brought you earlier in the day. No real change along 495. Still thinking we get that ramp up that takes place in the southern New Hampshire. Then particularly as you start going north of Manchester, we shaved just the southern tip. I mean, very small part off of the 8 to 12 in the Worcester Hills, thinking that there's probably enough sleep mixing in. You can prohibit keeping that from going any farther south than that. The other thing is in northern New England, we haven't made too many changes. We did enhance the what we call downsloping shadow a little bit on the north the west side of the whites. Basically, as the air from the east comes over the mountains and slopes down, sometimes that creates less snow. So we brought you down to that five to eight zone in a very small area near Littleton up to about Lindenville. 
Other than that, everything remains very much the same and very much on track. So that's where we stand for now. Some of you, many of you actually, have been asking about the eclipse, how things are looking for that. It's looking great, but I'm going to do an eclipse video for you coming up in just a little bit. So for now, that's your update on the storm. I think all systems are a go. Again, I mentioned at the top, uh, the wind situation, the coastal situation, coastal flooding, beach erosion, and the power outage situation for those heavy snow areas in northern New England continues. If you want more on that, you can see the technical forecast discussion, or I did a couple of breakouts today, coastal, and also did a mountain or ski country one that you'll find on the website, OneDegreeOutside.com as well. That's the way things look for now. I always appreciate that you check in right here. And again, that Eclipse update is coming for you in just a little bit.